Hey, come on in. How are you doing today, Glenn? Oh, doing good, thank you. Thank you so much for helping us with this process. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about who you are and what you do here? My name's Glenn Scott, and I'm an engineer with the Kansas Turnpike Authority. Today we're going to talk about the bridge raising project, particularly our third round of bridge raisings that we've undertaken here at the Kansas Turnpike, and specifically uh, the bridge raising at Ohio Street in Butler County. So I guess my first question is, why do we raise bridges and not just replace them? A need was identified by the trucking industry in particular for increased vertical clearance up and down the Kansas Turnpike to allow over height permitted vehicles to travel more sections of the state highway system. Most of our bridge racings that we've undertaken so far are on county roads over the Kansas Turnpike and it just wouldn't be feasible to spend the kind of money we're talking about to completely replace, buy new right-of-way and reconstruct to current criteria a whole brand new bridge at each of these locations because they're in pretty good condition. We get the benefit of the increased vertical clearance with more of a restoration rehabilitation type project of simply lifting the bridge in place and tied in with new approaches on the county roads. Can you talk a little bit about how this process even came about? The Kansas Turnpike employed very early on the uh, services of Burns and McDonald, and particularly their EPC process. And that's a design build process where we work closely with them on the concept and preliminary plans, get to a, a price point where we know what the project's gonna cost, and then they are responsible for procuring all the contractors, subcontractors, for delivering that project complete to the turnpike. Once we've identified all the subcontractors that'll be building the project, and we get close to the date of actually starting that construction, we have what we call a pre-construction meeting. The contractor brings in uh, their staff, their subcontractor staff, and the Turnpike likewise invites uh, a lot of different staff from the operations department and, and PR and law enforcement and engineering, and we just get together and talk about the details of the project. We talk about the schedule, talk about anything that might be, uh, have been observed in the field, like if there's a utility need or issue. And then it just lets everybody know and get on the same page as to when we're gonna start construction, how long we think that construction is gonna be in place, and how we're gonna progress. Are we gonna start at the South Bridge and work north? Are we gonna start north and work south? So yeah, it is an exciting time of the project because everyone's there and ready to, to get going and build the thing. How do you communicate construction projects to travelers? Mainly our Kansas Turnpike customers, really their notice is a standard set of road work signs as they approach a project. And I think that's really probably our best communication to our customers that there is something up ahead and something getting started is when that first orange sign or first orange barrels get set up on the roadway. With our bridge raising program, we have employed lane closures on the main line, and that is to not only improve the safety of our highway workers, but also our customers that travel through that project, sometimes on a daily basis as they commute to and from work. The intent of the Kansas Turnpike is to keep those closures as short a duration as possible, so yet to promote the safety of the, of the work environment and balance that with the convenience and, and efficiency of the Turnpike itself. What kind of challenges are there with these projects? There can be some challenges. Uh, we look to control as many of those as possible. I think good communication is the key. And we've usually tried to limit uh, adverse weather conditions. Don't want to work out there when it's too windy or certainly not if there's anything unsafe like lightning or, or heavy rain, uh, that type of thing. But Murphy's Law is, you know, anything that can go wrong probably will at some point. So just really good planning, some redundancy, 
and experienced contractors knowing what they're doing. We start every day with a safety meeting just so that everyone's on the same page, uh, spectators included, and uh, try to make sure that everything goes off without a hitch. So when it comes to the day of the actual bridge raise, what's that like? Bridge raising day is the most exciting day on the project because that's when the project just bursts into activity with all the personnel that are on hand. There's crews at each of the abutments, each of the piers, all working in unison together to raise the bridge. So we're using a pretty powerful hydraulic system, uh, uh, jacks that lift all in unison. So communication is key. The foreman on the ground is in communication with all the crews at all the different locations. Then in an orchestrated effort, they just evenly lift the bridge from all points at, at the same time. And slowly they just inch their way up until the bridge is lifted to the height that we've targeted for that lift. After we've lifted the bridge to the final height, we place new bolsters, and in this case, they're steel bolsters. They're two-piece units, and that's due to weight considerations. Guys have to lift these bolsters and set them into place. Then the old rockers um, are placed on top of the new bolsters to hold them in place uh, until uh, the abutments are cast integral and the bolts are, are put back in and tightened on, uh, on the, the pier caps. On, on this particular project, the deck condition was such that it needed more than just a little patch here and a little patch there. This, this bridge, we ended up milling the surface off and then sounding the deck to find areas of concrete that were no longer sound. Chipped that out, patched it, but then we placed a new inch and a half wearing course, a, a brand new concrete overlay on the deck surface, which should give us a, a good service life out of that, that deck. So is that it? We've raised the bridge, we're done? No, once the bridge has been lifted, raised, and, and cast integral at the, at the ends, there's still more work to be done. We have to come in and consider the approaches, raise them up to match the new bridge deck, and also the grading and guardrail on those approaches from the county road. We've taken the opportunity to also improve safety along the mainline highway of the turnpike. In this case, at mile marker 65, we were able to incorporate new barrier into the piers of the existing bridge and approach guardrail runs leading into those new barriers. So also, we've incorporated uh, slope protection, which is the rock you see coming down from the abutment uh, down to the toe of the slope. And then once that work is complete, uh, on this bridge in particular, we had to do some of those overhang uh, patches underneath the deck on the overhangs of the bridges up above and we took advantage of those lane closures to to work that uh, in but after we've got the bridge lifted and after we've got the barrier in place then we can remove that traffic control and open those lanes back up on the main line down underneath the bridge what part of this process are you most proud of so cl collaboration is important on these bridge raising projects this, this whole program originated out of the need that was identified for commerce. We had to engage uh, uh, the help of a design engineer, and that's included a whole core of, of good qualified contractors that come in and build the project. And then we've collaborated with the, with the locals. These, these bridges impact more than just the KTA mainline. They impact uh, the traffic of our partner counties. Collaboration with all of our partners on this bridge raising program is important to the Kansas Turnpike for continuous improvement into the future.